Joining me now is a senior fellow at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, Mark Watson. Mark, what an amazing result. I know you've spent a lot of time in Washington, mm. D.C. This emphatic win, what do you, what do you put it down to? Oh, God, there's so many factors, isn't there, Kieran? But I think there's a, a couple of things that stand out for me. And the bottom line is, it wasn't only that Donald Trump won this election, Kamala Harris lost this election as well. If you look at the, the turnout for Kamala Harris, it's way down on Joe Biden. Uh, she simply didn't get out the vote that I include myself in this. I thought she would turn out a lot more of the female voters in this election because of the issues and the way she presented them. But at the end of the day, I think Donald Trump was able to tap into the issues that actually mattered to the majority of people. And he got that really simple message and he hammered it time and time again, which was, do you feel better off now than you were four years ago? If you answer no to that question, you vote Donald Trump. And the warnings from the likes of John Kelly and others who worked in Trump administration, Mark One, mm -hmm. they fell on deaf ears. People didn't care. I think it's part of a growing syndrome of people pushing back against being told what to think or how to view someone. I think it didn't make an impact because Donald Trump had already been president once. They'd seen yeah. him for four years and they see him on this campaign. And the economy was in better shape. Right. And whether, you know, the numbers are in uh, uh, President Biden's favour now or not, the fact is people felt that it was better, America was better under uh, under Donald Trump. 78% of Americans, according to Pew Research, think America is headed in the wrong direction. That should have been a pretty good indicator for a lot of people about how the vote would go. Yes, indeed. And at the, at the end... Rested on the economy. Mm. Or uh, the economy stupid, as they say. It's always about the economy. It was. James Carville, who was a uh, key election advisor to Bill Clinton, said it's the economy stupid. And, of course, that's where it bites, around the kitchen table, as they say in America. But there's another thing that Bill Clinton said um, 20 years ago, and he said, for the American electorate, uh, strong and wrong beats weak and right. And I think, I'm not commenting on who was right and wrong in this election, I'm simply saying that Americans do look at candidates and say, can I see them in a crisis? Can I see them leading America through a crisis? The Commander-in-Chief of the military, remember, and I think they looked and said, I can see Donald Trump, I can't see Kamala Harris. Yes, and you spent time there uh, during the first term of, of mm. the Trump presidency, The now a split eight years, mm. but you were there for a long time in that phase. And I, I guess... To, and I, co I covered a lot of the presidency as well um, at various moments, but you, you just say the one thing we can predict is unpredictability <laughs> when it comes to Donald Trump. And sometimes in foreign policy, that's good, isn't it? Uh, certainly Donald Trump would say that's one of the reasons that he was able to be the first president in however many years that hadn't started a war. And he will say that people feared me because they didn't know what I was going to do. This sort of madman of uh, international relations idea it goes all the way back to President Nixon and Henry Kissinger, who w went to Ch uh, the USSR and said, don't push President Nixon. I can't control this guy. I don't know what he's going to do. And, you know, it does create doubt and uncertainty in the minds of an adversary about how will this person react if something goes wrong. Not, not dictated by old norms. No. That's no. the fundamental point, isn't it? There's, you know, there will be change under Donald Trump, some of which will be adverse to Australia's interest, um, particularly in the world of trade. Uh, he's not a, a free trader. He's a protectionist by instinct. Uh, he's already talked about tra tariffs going up. All those things are bad for international trade, and that means they're essentially bad for a, bad for a free trading nation like Australia. But it might not all be bad in the sense that um, if there is stability through his unpredictability. Mm. <laughs> That's a good thing for Australia. Yeah. And, and yeah. certainly when you look at... Uh, what, the one that I'm intrigued with uh, is going to be China because mm. already you've had Xi Jinping phoning President Trump this morning, among mm. other world leaders, Prime Minister Albanese, among those to have spoken to Donald Trump. But Xi Jinping was on the phone yeah. and spoken to him. Yeah. Oh, look, they, they're well aware of what Donald Trump can do in turn on a dime on any given issue or any relationship. Um, one of the things I think that sets Donald Trump apart, even from Joe Biden or predecessors, he believes in his own ability to intercede personally to resolve issues on the international stage. Most presidents, most prime ministers take a lot of advice from, you know, uh, uh, other politicians, from ministers, from... Officials. Officials, yeah. and then come to a decision. Donald Trump thinks he can... He, he can get the right outcome if he just intervenes personally. Yes, so that makes it all the more important that Australia as well yeah. gets on the front foot. Yeah. And, and um, maybe a little tricky with Kevin Rudd there being ambassador. 
Yeah, look, I, I will say this. Uh, we think about the US presidency a lot more than US presidents think about Australia. Um, but it is true that, you know, frankly, I was surprised that the current ambassador hadn't taken those tweets down earlier. Um, that would have been prudent, I would have thought. Um, but I don't think Donald Trump will be focused on Australia, AUKUS or Kevin Rudd when he first arrives in the White House. Good point. Mark Watson, great to chat on a uh, historic occasion. Big Thank week. Thanks, Kieran.